For a guy that loves P-51s as his number one favorite plane, I sure don't fly enough of them on the channel. And today we're gonna take a look at this beautiful P-51. I love the overall look of it. But one of my favorite features that just stands out right out of the gate is the yellow cowl and nose section of the airplane. We all know that yellow just pops in the sky. Now this plane is a traditional five channel airplane with the sixth channel being retracts. We've got flaps on here as well. And I'll be flying today on just a nice, dumb Spectrum receiver. No uh, AS3X or Smart Tech or anything like that in there, no safe. We're just gonna fly straight uh, with no assistance. This airplane was pieced together very quickly, uh, 20 minutes or less, and I'm very excited to fly it. I hope it goes well. A nice maiden flight today. Before we take off though, guys. <laughs> nice and snappy. Oh, it looks good too, doesn't it? And if you don't like these fuel tanks on the side, you can just take them right off. And of course those flaps look great. I'm ready to fly. Classic tail dragger. I'm gonna to try to do a little right rudder, but we're ready for takeoff. I had to make a couple small adjustments on the ground. Get that tail wheel up and we should be able to take off pretty nicely. There we go. I'm gonna to have to trim it. I can feel the need for trim. Just want to keep throttle up because this is a 3S Warbird. So let's go ahead and put the landing gear up. That was flaps off. It feels good with the landing gear up, but I'm going to need to trim it just a hair. Make sure the CG feels right. We'll do a nice full throttle pass. That feels pretty good, actually. Oh, nope. Whoa. <laughs> the elevator's a little touchy. <laughs> Give me a second to just get a feel for this. Roll it. Woo. That's nice. It's going to be an aggressive little flyer. We'll go ahead for a See nice that. loop. Yeah, this is good. I just need to get the trim right and it's gonna be awesome. For a maiden flight with no AS3X or safe, it's really nice. I just need a little bit of up elevator in this. When I was looking on the ground, visually it looked like it had too much up. Just finding that sweet spot and doing so while you're flying without having safe is a little harder, so I'm doing it a bit higher up. I definitely need some Expo in this. Oh, it would look good with Expo. Okay, so my elevator probably could use like 25, 30% Expo. That's why it's gonna look a little twitchy on this flight. Uh, but let's go full throttle pass. 3S, 2200 milliamp. Good speed. This is so reminiscent of things we used to fly, Abby, back in the day, like our Tower Hobbies planes. Nice and quiet too. Whoa, see that? See how touchy that <laughs> elevator is? You're scaring me. Well, it's scaring me too. I definitely see the benefit of having Expo. Let's climb it and rudder over. A little bit of rudder input. There we go. That's not bad. Let's do a zero throttle pass. See what it sounds like. It really flies good. It's on rails, but that elevator is just so touchy. Maybe I have it set up in the wrong hole on the... Uh, the horn, but clevis. Uh, the clevis, I think it's right. You got the clevis and the horn and the, <laughs> such weird names. It flies good. It's tracking well. That's hands free. It's tracking really well. It could use a one click of right aileron. We just about have it perfect right now. It's, it's really perfect. It just needs expo. That's where we're at. It just needs expo. Yeah, there we go. So let's keep it kind of scale and just enjoy this flight. We've got a bit of a live audience behind us too. And so I have to be aware of that. But if you're looking for a nice, good size Warbird that flies on a 3S pack, this is it. This is beautiful. This is flying and looks so much better than that old Tower Hobbies P-51. I hate to say that because that's so near and dear to my heart. See how it flies inverted. Should do pretty well. That is not the sound of my airplane. There's a dirt bike back there. <laughs> not a bad pass. And we'll go outside loop. I think we've got enough power. But I'm blinded oh, by the man. sun, so I'm going behind us. <laughs> <laughs> it flies inverted pretty well, but guys, this is a, just a Warbird. It does very well right side up. 3S battery means we want to maintain speed on the bank so we don't have a tip stall, a wing tip stall. That four bladed prop looks so good though. And as long as you maintain about 50% throttle, it stays in the air. Let's go full flaps on this next pass and see how it does. We'll do 
Harry's over here beside us. Harry, let's do a dirty pass. How's that sound? <laughs> let's get full flaps and the landing gear down. A nice slow, lot of lift. That's funky. I definitely need that expo in there. Throttling up, landing gear up, flaps are back up. Could have looked prettier, but it was there. <laughs> Yeah, you in that elevator. elevator. It's so <laughs> twitchy. And that's what these maiden flights are about. That's what our videos are about. So when you guys go out to fly it yourself, you're not jumping and scared seeing that very <laughs> twitchy elevator control. You know to put Expo in there. Even though I'm a huge, I, I usually don't like flying with Expo. Now I see the benefit to it and it's gonna clean this flight up and make this plane way more enjoyable. Let's go in for a nice, dive we'll climb it up roll it over pull back and just dive dive down and mayday mayday we'll pull up just in time with some power otherwise we would have stalled out there and it's that twitchy elevator that is really the only thing i don't like about this is it twitchy or is it your thumb well it's too sensitive that's it it's just too <laughs> sensitive so when i go for a small correction down it really just overdoes it you see like mm -hmm. it, it's it's just too sensitive and that is where expo comes in handy it just your five minute timer it softens the elevator movement when i'm near center stick and on a plane like this there's a massive benefit to it so this is going to be a challenging landing because of that so i'm dropping the landing gear i saw both wheels go down it the landing gear down does affect how this plane flies you know what it almost looks like they're not all the way down so i'm going to bring it in and take a closer look i see they're them. down they're it's down. the ordinances we're messing yeah. with you huh so I'm gonna throttle up, hopefully bring this back in one solid piece because I really like how it flies. I just need to make a couple adjustments. That's what maiden flights are for. So after we bring it off of this bank, I'll go full flaps and see if we can maybe have a fairly smooth landing with such sensitive elevator. That is, that's challenging and I don't want to stall that high. A little bounce, but considering how sensitive that elevator is, I'll take that last little parachute that I had. It taxis well. The rear wheel does steer, so we can get some nice movement out of that. And it just looks amazing, especially with those flaps down like that. What a beautiful plane. I'm honestly pretty happy with that for a maiden. It could go much worse, uh, especially without the stability of AS3X. And I'm trying to show you guys something cool here. <laughs> I'll just pull this forward and then out it's a lock key system if you don't like those fuel tanks on there you want to fly without them they do create a little bit of drag and it'll affect the flight performance a little bit and just the overall look of the airplane too you tell me there you go you get to pick best of both worlds okay left. hold on all right left right <laughs> let us know in the comments uh, it's a great maiden flight and vital feedback comes from maiden flights uh when you watch them on youtube if you don't want to destroy your brand new airplane from a scary maiden you know that was one of the more sensitive elevator maiden flights i've ever had maybe not the most but it's up there definitely very noticeable i'm sure you guys saw it every time i barely moved it so I would probably hit 25, maybe even 30% expo on the elevator. The other control surfaces felt fine to be completely honest, but maybe you could put 5% on there or something if you have shaky thumbs. It's a beautiful looking plane. I love how this P-51 looks and we had a great flight time. Now we don't have anything like telemetry in this or anything with the receiver that I put in there, but you could put one of those more expensive higher end receivers in there if you wanted to have telemetry back to your radio. This plane will be linked in the description box below. And if you're unfamiliar with the brand, they're sold by our favorite mom and pop hobby shop here in the States. I've even heard people say, hey, if I ordered something and I had an issue, I just called Dan and he helped me ride out. There's two people basically that you're gonna get on the phone if you need anything. They do a fantastic job quality wise. They are right up there with the best of the best, and they're a little cheaper than some of the competition out there. It's a great brand to get behind, and if you're just discovering this brand because of our channel, click the link in our description box below because it doesn't cost you a single extra penny, but it does help to support us, our family, our YouTube channel, which is totally free content for you guys with like a decade now, family friendly. And this- Almost, don't almost, get ahead of yourself. Almost, And this newly discovered, somewhat newly discovered mom and pop hobby shop that we're working with to help get the word out there on their stuff. Almost anything that we've seen from them on our channel has been a solid nine out of 10. And anyone that watches our videos will back that up. They really do a great job. 
a little bit of a scary maiden. We could have ended up in a crash or two if I wasn't aware and made adjustments of that sensitive elevator. And you know what? We walked away unscathed today, but I'm glad I had AMA in my pocket. That's the Academy of Model Aeronautics. It's an insurance program designed for the RC enthusiast. RC cars, boats, planes, drones, helicopters, it, they cover it all. But I'm really glad I have them when it comes to uh, airplanes especially, just because they're fairly unpredictable on a maiden flight. So if you want to learn more about AMA, we'll have them linked in the description box below. And because we got the airplane back today in one piece and it's just a beautiful day, uh, guys, I've gotten a lot accomplished today. I won't bore you with my long list of tasks that I wanted to complete, but this was one of them. And I'm just feeling really accomplished and really happy and just pumped to be alive. Built and flown on the same day. It's pretty good. Yes, and actually hoping maybe another one, but I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I want to thank God for just today. Another day with the heart beating, just getting to enjoy this. It's a nice calm day. I couldn't ask for anything else. And I'm so happy. And a uh, little bit of YouTube magic, but it is Father's Day. It's just been a great day. So thanks to everyone that supports us. This is a long video of thanks, but I want to say a massive thanks to our Patreon supporters too, because without you guys, we couldn't do what we do. You really are the backbone of the channel and everybody watching should be grateful to our Patreon supporters because if we didn't have the support that we do, I promise you we would not be out here like we are. So thank you guys. We have the best Patreon support team of any RC group on YouTube. It means the world to us. Now if you're into Warbirds and you liked this plane, we'll have another video just for you popping up right about now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you there. Bye. <laughs>